Do not adjust your television set. What you're about to see will be different and yet the same. What am I talking about? Come here, let me show you, watch. See if you can spot the difference between this version of the plank versus this version, watch close. Got it? Those were two versions of the same exercise. But the thing is that really there wasn't much difference between the first one and the second one, right? It's like a comic strip that I used to read when I was a kid in the Sunday paper. It was called Hocus Focus. And what Hocus Focus was, it was two of the same pictures, one on top, one on bottom. They looked the same, but you had to find six things that were different, that were missing from the, the bottom picture from the top. And you really had to look for it because they appeared to be the same. So what's my point? Well, my point's not to talk to you about comic strips that I read when I was a kid, but really to get you to look at the differences between an exercise like the plank, where you can have one client or two clients doing the same exercise and appear to have textbook form with it, like they're doing it properly. But one client might be feeling a lot of different muscles compared to the other client, right? So how do you know when one client, and, and the muscles that one client's feeling might be spot on exactly what they should be working on, but the other client could be using compensatory strategies from muscle imbalances, could be using muscles that link to their uh, shoulder problems that they might be having, their lower back problems they might be having, right? So how do we know? Well, we gotta test it out and we gotta look for a few things because appearances can be very deceiving. Now a lot, there's, there's a common trend and I wouldn't be surprised if nine out of 10 clients that you train to do the plank, if you put them all in a room and had all 10 people doing the plank, I wouldn't be surprised if nine out of those 10 were feeling most of that exercise in their arms or their shoulders or their lower back or even their quads. And, and very few of them would be feeling it where they're supposed to. See, all those muscles that I just named are, are classic compensation strategies. And a lot of those are, are clues as to why our, uh, a lot of our clients have shoulder and low back problems and even knee problems. So some things you can look for during the plank and try the plank with yourself. Challenge yourself and see what you, what you feel when you do it. But here's some things to look for with the plank. So those classic compensation strategies, a lot of times you'll see if you watch the shoulder and the hip, when, when your client initiates the movement, what you will see, sometimes you'll see it real obvious, that the shoulders will come up before the hips. So it could look like this and then that, right? Um, or it could be a little more subtle, like watch. Watch my shoulders and then my hip. See it? Show you it again. Watch my shoulders come up and then my hip. A lot more subtle, right? But those subtle things, those little subtleties, those are how our clients are compensating and, and, and keeping themselves in pain, right? That's classic overcompensation with the muscles in the, in the arms and the shoulders and the lower back. So what we want to look for and be able to cue our clients to do is to keep the shoulders down and almost initiate the movement with the hip. So the hip kind of moves a little and then watch the whole body comes up together. See that? That's the big difference. And that's the difference with getting the proper abdominal stabilizers to help initiate and support you through that movement. And when that happens, then your clients will feel a lot less of the shoulders and arms overworking. That's why a lot of clients can't hold a plank. If you test them for 30 seconds, a lot of them will wear out and they can't even hold it 30 seconds. But that's the difference is with getting the right muscles in there and helping them overcome a lot of those compensation strategies that lead to pain um, versus you know, the other way around. So that's all I want to share with you today. Just some simple correction strategies for the plank that you can try with yourself, try with your clients. Let me know how they work for you. Leave me a comment right here. And if there's any other exercises or things that you're uh, wanting to know, then again, leave me a comment right here. Ask me and maybe in a, uh, another video, I'll get them to you, all right? So get to it, um, try it out yourself, try it with your clients and let me know how it works for you and I'll see you next time.